Hey guys, how's it going? Tifty here, and today we're looking at the double pogo y jumpy thing that I'm doing in the background here. I'm going to try and break this down into some kind of tutorial, basically. This is something that's really difficult to get your head around. Um, I know I found it difficult when I first started out trying this out. It takes a while for it to kind of click, if you see what I mean, and then suddenly it kind of just makes sense. So these are a few things that I found helpful for me things that I wish I was told when I was learning how to do this jump. And we're not going to be talking about the vertical pogo, this guy here. I actually find this one really tricky to do and it's actually probably less useful. It can be useful for practicing so you can do the other jumps better, but in reality you're not actually going to ever do that on its own. But yeah, throughout this I'm going to be just jumping around this map and I'll be talking about a few different examples, different scenarios, and I've got some methods that I think will be useful if you guys want to learn this. So I hope you enjoy, let's jump in. The first thing I want to talk about is, I'm calling it the key rule. So you can put the first one down whenever you like, like I have here. Put it down, take your time. All that matters is that when you do shoot the second one, you have to detonate the first one within the second one's arm time, if that makes sense. So just for some context, the sticky bomb launcher has a 0.7 second arm time on the stickies, which sounds like you can probably ignore it because it's practically nothing, but actually it drastically affects how you use it in general. A lot of predicting where the enemy's gonna go and stuff like that. So yeah, when it comes to doing this pogo, you basically have that window, you have 0.7 seconds before the second one has armed. I don't know if that's useful to know, that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes. I thought it was useful to know. I guess you can probably ignore that if you just wanna try it out and get the muscle memory going, but I think that's interesting to know because that's kind of what the entire technique revolves around. So yeah, you can put one down, wait as long as you want. The moment you fire that second one, you have to detonate that first one in that 0.7 seconds. So basically that the second one doesn't explode whilst you're detonating the first one, that's the key. Obviously, if you wait more than 0.7 seconds, then you know you press right click and they both detonate and it's just no good. Okay, so I'll walk you through a bunch of steps here and you can sort of do one at a time and then add the next bit. Basically to make it sort of more bite sized so you're not having to just try and do it all at once. So you start off with doing a sticky jump, simple. And then do a sticky jump and as you do that sticky jump, shoot another one, kind of as you're jumping or in the air, just have another one be shot before you land, basically. That's a good first step. And then once you've got that, you know, fairly simple, try shooting that second one so it lands roughly in the same place that you land. That's actually a really useful thing to get into the habit of doing because if you are jumping around the map, and doing this makes you move around much more quickly rather than landing, putting another one down, then jumping, getting into the habit of in midair, putting that next one down so you're ready to jump off again. As you can see, I'm doing it a lot here. If you kind of just get into this idea of doing a sticky jump, putting one down and roughly where I'm gonna land, I think that's a really good first step. And yeah, I guess the next step would be, once you've kind of gotten into the habit of doing that very comfortably, is basically doing the same thing, but trying to shoot that second sticky as you're jumping. Yeah, basically much earlier than say mid jump, you do it right at the beginning of the jump as you're jumping onto the first sticky bomb. Then you shoot the second one, roughly where you think you're gonna land. And that I think is a good way to break it down into stepping stones that you can try to do. You can do that for a while and that's really useful. And then eventually you can think about, okay, Let's see if I can land and basically detonate that second one as I land on it and obviously make sure you're crouching. So yeah, hopefully when you've got the basics, we can start thinking about different scenarios and different versions. First off, regarding the landscape, practice on a nice flat surface to get your head around it, but in reality, that's not really gonna be the case. And unfortunately, you do have to consider if you're going uphill or downhill or whatever it is, that does kind of affect how the jump plays out. So let's take a look at some examples. So for example here, let's say I wanna go down this slope. Basically, I don't wanna get as much air as normal. I don't wanna take that full damage. So one thing I find useful is actually just detonating when you're a bit more in front of the second sticky. Say you're normally at like a 45 degree angle, you could almost be more level with the sticky, if you see what I mean. So it's kind of directly behind you and projecting you forward rather than up and forward. I tend to wait a little bit longer before I detonate and that's something you'll just have to try out once you've gotten the hang of the basics we went over earlier. Try this out and see how it feels. So yeah there are loads of different versions of doing this pogo so I find that if you put the two sticky bombs quite close together you can get a decent amount of speed perhaps more so than if you did them further apart whereas on the other hand if you do them further apart I feel like I get a bit more control over the jump and you can actually use that second one to kind of steer you in another direction. Say for example there's a corner 
a choke point. There's a sniper guarding it. He's really good. And you want to get around there really quickly and maybe just jump him. That's when this kind of thing can be useful. You can actually start the jump from around the corner, navigate round, and you're actually flying around this corner so quickly, hopefully he won't be able to get that shot onto you. And obviously the actual way you steer is just simply a matter of landing on that second one slightly towards the side you want to be going and obviously using A and D to control yourself. So using a combination of these you can actually get around the map pretty quickly actually and probably quicker than you would be able to if you're doing single sticky jumps. For instance if you were on bad water and you wanted to very quickly jump right past the enemy, get all the way around, destroy their teleporter. This maybe it's a cheap play but uh, you might want to do that if you're really struggling and this can be a way of doing that very quickly. So yeah, the final version of this is the air pogo. Now this is much harder. I think you're definitely better off learning the floor pogo first and then moving on to this once you've got the hang of that. The one thing that I find useful to bear in mind is that you need to aim slightly higher than you think you would. But yeah, a lot of it leads on from what we talked about earlier. So you're simply, as you're jumping, you're shooting the second sticky bomb and you want to basically be following the path of that second sticky bomb, not just having it land where you would be landing, but actually having it going in the exact same path to which you're flying as well, if you see what I mean. That's really obviously important because you want it to be behind you when you detonate. Hopefully practicing what we talked about earlier will lead you into this quite nicely and then it'll just be a matter of making sure you're following the path of that sticky and then finding the right time to detonate. So you're like you want to detonate earlier than you were when you're doing the floor pogo and like I said you want to aim a bit higher than perhaps you might think I, I find that useful anyway but other than that it's a very difficult one to describe and it's really a matter of just trying it out over and over again and really grinding it till you're getting the hang of it if you find that when you detonate the second one it's kind of whacking you downwards towards the floor that's kind of a good sign that means you're getting close <laughs> And if you do get stuck on something like this, the best thing you can do is to basically try tweaking one of the variables. Say, when you shoot the second one, when you detonate, how high an angle you're using, until you get it spot on, and then, yeah, just try and replicate what you did there and do it over and over. And as we talked about before, steering around corners, you can obviously do that with the air pogo as well, which is actually really nice. Again, if you want to very quickly jump around a corner, make it very difficult for snipers to get you, or even past sentry guns, to be honest. That's when something like this can be really useful and, of course, a lot of fun as well. So I thought I'd finish up with when you'd actually use it. Now, obviously, it's got to be large open maps. Replacing the sticky bomb launcher, if you're playing seriously, is questionable. It's such an important weapon, but it's still very useful to learn this because if you've got a massive buff or something, you know, there might be that odd occasion where you will need it. It even helps with just simply your regular sticky jumps as well. It's about controlling those stickies to the best of your ability. And also, I mentioned it already, but it's massively good fun to do. Joining a pub, equipping your favorite grenade launcher or whatever, jumping around. I think it's one of the best experiences in TF2. One specific scenario that the floor pogo is useful for and where the regular sticky jump will not do is when you need to go through narrow corridors or low ceilinged areas. This is a really good kind of example of this here actually. This is a super low bit of ceiling here. It's difficult, you're going to want to do the first jump so you're going very horizontally rather than getting much air at all. But yeah, doing something like that, if you want to get through this really quickly, straight through this choke, straight to the back lines, cause some havoc, can be a lot of fun and it can be really useful. And one final random tip for you guys, remember you can sticky jump backwards if you want. If you're under pressure, you might want to put one at your feet, shoot pipes at the enemy as you're reversing backwards and then do a kind of backwards sticky jump. I actually do that quite a lot on this map towards the end where there's that huge health pack and I'm on the slope. Again, I just thought I'd throw that in there for free, all right? You're well, you are welcome, you are welcome. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to cover today. I hope that was useful. I think especially at the very beginning, those steps to follow, I think will be a great way to try and pick this up. It's something you really do have to just grind out. You've got to just practice and it's going to feel really unnatural to begin with. But yeah, eventually it will start to make more sense and hopefully these steps will get you there quicker. And as I said, it's so much fun once you do know how to use your sticky jump up to its full advantage. So it's definitely worth learning. I hope this will be a useful resource for you guys. I certainly use the sticky bomb launcher a lot more these days and I get the impression you guys enjoy watching me use it too. So I'm sure there'll be lots more videos with me using it in the future. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next Next one. Pogo. 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 Oh dear, I'm. I apologise for that. Probably just edit that out.